Hello again, everyone. <clears throat> um, since the last cringe of me reading my childhood writings video did so well, it, I don't know if it did or not, but I have two giant boxes. Um, it was originally just the one tote, but then we found another box. So um, there's a lot of stuff. And um, for those of you who were really excited about things like uh, uh, Crazy Man and his arch nemesis Cuckoo Man, um, you're going to get uh, a much tastier taste of that in a little bit here. Um, so, let me start going through stuff. So we got one of these. Ah, oh, this is this is um, my tenth grade journal that we had to keep in English class, and um, I think how it. Hmm. I think how we did it, because it looks like we only did it once a week. So I think, if I remember correctly, the teacher would give us a prompt, and then we would have to write something. <sighs> On October 18th, of whatever that year was, I said, if I could die, that's really about it. I have no idea what the context is for this. <clears throat> so I'm like 15 here. Um, uh, let's see. Is there, oh. November 1st. This, this is a big one. And I could tell you exactly, I could tell you exactly what this is. Ever since Three Musketeers has changed its wrapper, it seems to not taste as good. But it's big on chocolate. That is called marketing um, getting seeped into your brain. And if you don't remember, because like Three Musketeers has a silver wrapper. So that means in 1993... They changed from the white wrapper with the blue and red um, shit to a silver wrapper with blue and red shit. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, um... November 3rd, every thought I always try to think of any way I could do it, but I always do what is right, usually. That doesn't sound correct. I think I was trying to church it up a little bit here. Um... I wanted to put, oh, this is uh, December 1st. I wanted to put decorations on the Christmas tree and my mom wouldn't let me. <sighs> Think things are getting crazy over here. Um, so this is pretty drab. Um, I thought this was, um, what does that say? I had to, okay. Yeah, so anyway, that's what that is. It's not the most bombastic... Th oh, did I pull this out last time? Anyway, this is the script for my film Finger Bang um, when I was working under the name Creep Creeperson, and the movie's name was changed. Because, shocker, uh, distributors didn't want to put a movie out called Finger Bang. Um... So they called it another superhero movie, I think is what they changed it to. Okay, so 
just give you some little bits here. Um, the finger banger says another test. Sack hung low, and then Sack hung low says, "No test. This is real." That, that's pretty exciting. What else we got? Um, Lady Goldfist. Now be nice to your father, dear. This is very important day for him. Tabitha. Groovy. Goldfist. Would it kill you to show some enthusiasm? Tabitha. Could it? And then Professor Evil enters. My lord, have you decided anything on our new guest? Goldfist. Yes, bring him in here. I want some entertainment. I, I played Goldfist in that movie. Um, let me see, is there anything fun in here that makes this not sound like a complete crap fest? Um, okay, this is from scene 37. Um, Goldfist says, Hold it there, banger! Fingerbanger says, where's the robot, Goldfist? This sounds like something you'd see on The Office. This is so stupid. Um, Goldfist, wouldn't you like to know? Fingerbanger, yes, I definitely would like to know. That's why I asked. Goldfist, well, I'm not going to tell you. Fingerbanger, then you'll die. Goldfist, ninjas, bring the ace out of my sleeve. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, so yeah, that was not super old. Um, this is a trashed piece of paper that um, is the lyrics for one of the songs um, from that band I was talking about on the last video, Belligerence. This is You Can Die, You Could Die is what it was called. You can die anytime, in your sleep and in your dreams. You wasted your life here on Earth. You're on your own on the way to hell. Ooh. Heavy. What's this? Oh. This is, um... This is the lyrics to, um... Gosh, the lighting in here is shit. This is the lyrics to Suicidal Tendencies, I Saw Your Mommy. And Mommy is spelt wrong. Oh, I don't think I wrote this, though. This doesn't look like my writing. But yeah, the band I was in, we covered that. The I saw your mommy and your mommy's dead kind of thing. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, composition book. This says SFO on it. So that means this is for the sci-fi originals, which was um, like an electro-punk band I was in in the mid-2000s. We had songs like Uranus Will Rule You, Star Wars Line, Captain Kirk's Five-Year Mission, Comcastic Voyage, Pulsating Anal Probe. You know, it's funny because those other ones, it was like there was like a little sleight of hand, you know? But Pulsating Anal Probe, that's just, that's just what it is. Uh, Boa vs. Python, TK421, Alien Replicons from Beyond the Moon. That's from The Simpsons. Um, Where Has Blaster the Rocket Boy Gone? I totally forgot about that song. I used to love Blaster the Rocket Boy. Um, House of the Dead 2, like T-O-O. And then it goes House of the Dead also. Um, Phantom Force 5, Man with the Screaming Brain, and The Day We Destroyed the Earth Transmission. Cool. In this band, I was a character from Uranus called Scrotar the Conqueror. And the um, other person in the band was this lady named Clitora the Destroya. And then um, our producer who produced our album, we called him um, Commander Matter Fecal. And then um, the drummer that we didn't have originally, because originally it was just um, a drum machine, but we were going to end up having like a live drummer 
and we started like doing all this lore for it. But um, his name was going to be where where come on what's going on here? His name was going to be Cock K O K, and um, then we were gonna have during a show somebody kidnap him, and um, the album. Not the second album, but the third album was going to be the the search for cock, and um, it didn't end up working out. It, it was only a one album project. I can't remember if the next album was supposed to be the dark side of Uranus, or if it was. I think the dark side of Uranus was the fourth one. I can't remember what the second one was. It might come to me, unless I wrote it down in here. Did I? Death Ray a Go Go. The UFO from SFO. Oh, yeah, Uranus Strikes Back. That's what the second album was. Um, man. Really pushing the envelope there, guys. Okay, what's this? Uh, another Mead composition book with nothing on the front. Oh, this looks like a calendar of sorts. Uh, oh, this was um, Creeperson, like what we were doing. So this is like 2004, 2005. Um, oh, it like has like the shows we played and who we played with. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting, that little note-taking. Um, and then I just started writing some crap story. Oh, and then I started um, my monster fighting league with people like Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, Phantasm. Or is that Phantom of the Opera? I don't fucking know. I did abbreviations for everything. Oh, wow, and this just kept going. So, yeah, so that's what that was. Yeah, what I would do is I would just write names down and then, like, flip a coin or roll a dice and figure out who the winner would be and then make this storyline up in my head. And, yes, I was a grown-ass man when I was doing these things. <clears throat> Still do it. Um, this is MS. And I don't remember what that stands for, but um, it was some... Yeah, some sort of band. Who the hell am I? Um, bite it off. Oh, I wonder what that's about. Um, why do you always... Oh. <laughs> oh, this is a song called Prostate Lover. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say the name of that. And I'm not going to say the name of that. And I'm not going to say the name of that. I'm not going to say the name of that. I'm not going to say the name of that. Oh, my God. Oh. Amputee fisting party. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what MS could have stood for. Um, but, yeah, this is, like, early 20s. Um, wow, I just kept writing all sorts of stuff that I can't, um, say on the good old YouTube. MS. I have no idea what that means. Ah, <sighs> oh, the 11 day journal of spade 13. This is a, it's kind of like the first like novella. Oh my gosh, I found the missing page! Like, I came... Because when I originally wrote this, I wrote it on paper like this. Okay? And it was in this notebook. And then I found the notebook, and it was missing the first page. And I was like, how can I possibly write this and put it out if I don't have the original page? Oh, Wow. Oh, there's some drawings, some sketches. Uh, oh, and then I started writing the screenplay of it in here, too. That's interesting. 
Um, yeah, so this was 98, so I was 20 when I wrote this. Is that right? Do I have a date on there? Um, let me see. Let me see if I could read the first line to you. Day one. It's now almost 4 a.m. I'm at a diner adjacent to my motel on Highway 39, near the 91 freeway. I know for a fact now that he is following me. This being my first century, I should speak a little of him. He wants to kill me. That's all I know. I'm not sure who he is or why he wants to, but I know he wants to and has to. Wow, let me double up my line there. Um, I'm having coffee and toast, looking out the window, trying to see him. Sandy here isn't much of a waitress. In fact, she's horrible. Um, and it just keeps going. Um, but yeah, that was like a really fun... Um, I don't know if everyone does this, because I thought everyone did it, but then when I was thinking back on it, mm -hmm. not a lot of my friends did it. But as soon as school got out, like when I was done with high school, I would just get in my car and just like take off for like a week, just in any direction. Like I would go towards a freeway and then drive and then like at the last second decide I would go down this freeway. And I would just keep doing that, trying to remember where I went. Um, and then, like, I would find, like, a truck stop. And um, most of these truck stops had, like, like diners and arcades and, like, weird gift shops and, like, showers and laundry rooms. And this one even had, like, this little tiny, like, movie theater. Like, you could rent um, DVDs in the gift shop and then go into this weird, like, theater room. <clears throat> and watch movies and shit. And, um, I would just drive until like, I would see some, like a truck stop that looked like it was banging. Like it was just like a big banging truck stop. And I would just like go have some coffee, um, eat some cheese covered fries or something and then play pinball until I decided to leave. And sometimes like, it would be like, I was there like 24 hours, just like, hanging out because there was always something to do. And then, um, I would just go to the next, I'd get back on the freeway, decide, like I would go, do I want to go back home or do I just want to keep going? And, um, I just keep going a lot of the time. And then like, if I knew I was like halfway somewhere, like if I was halfway to Sacramento or halfway to Phoenix or, um, San Diego or something like that. I would just go, Oh, I guess I'll just go there. And it was like, if I had family, like I, like my grandma lived in Tulare, which is kind of by Fresno. So sometimes I would just randomly show up at her house, even though it was like a three and a half hour drive, or I would just randomly show up at state line, um, in prim Nevada and go to, um, whiskey Pete's. Or not Whiskey Pete's, Buffalo Bills. That was that was my stomping grounds. But I would just do shit like that <clears throat> and not talk to anybody for a while and then show back up and everyone's like, oh shit, I thought you were dead or I thought blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nah, I just got fucking sick of sitting around here and so I just fucking got in the car and took off. So, um, yeah. So, that's that. What's this? Another composition book. This is from Spade 13. That was a band I was in. And this is from April 14th, 2001 to March 2003. So these are songs. Oh, but this is cool. Because I used to... Oh, look at this. This is crazy. I went to this show. I don't remember what year. Oh, 2003. November 14th, 2003. Um, went and saw KMFDM at the House of Blues. That was pretty fun. Uh, let's see what else do we got here. Is that in this one? It's got to be in this one. How come this isn't? Oh my gosh. I'm going to start screaming. Oh, and there's some of my language I invented. 
can't really see it. Um, but yeah, there was this, um, I cut out all the, um, damn it, all of the clubs in Orange County and L.A. County and um, <clears throat> taped them in here so when I, we needed to like book shows I could just like go in alphabetical order and look it up so kind of interesting interesting way to do shit what else do we got in here I thought that was in here is it not in here what's that Oh, a coffee house thing. All the coffee houses. And then I was a big fan of the Royal Tenenbaums. I thought that movie was great. And so I printed out this picture of her when I was at work. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I make it bigger, she just turns into a bunch of spots. And so um, I made it bigger. And then, um, did I make it really big? No, it's not really big. But yeah, so, I'm like, she's just a bunch of spots. So that was really cool. I thought that was fun. I thought there was some other stuff in here that was kind of cool, but... I guess there's not... I thought I, oh, wait, yeah, I'm not going to show you that. That's not... Oh, and then I did this where... I um, just cut a bunch of words out of a magazine and put them in a hat and pulled one word out at a time and put them in a row and that was going to be the lyrics to a song. And then the song ended up being Glory to the Rhythm of Death. Um, so that was pretty cool. Oh, and here's here's some drawings. One is a head with a foot, and another is some sort of scorpion centipede with an old-school TV on its back. Because that's a thing, obviously. Um, oh, there's some drawings. Oh, wait, I don't think I could show you those. No! Those are quite foul, sir. So you will not be seeing those. Oh, and that's a... Oh, this is my favorite one. Or one of my favorite ones. I did that. Oh, I did that. And then for the eye right here, I just um, put a cigarette through it. <laughs> I'm such a dork, dude. Come on. Why is this so difficult? Jesus. All right, whatever. Okay, what else we got? Oh, this is this is the this is the the granddaddy of them all. Okay, this is my Nightmare on Elm Street folder, and inside this folder, I have a bunch of very young writing. Because, like most children <clears throat> of the eighties, we thought a murdering child molester was a good role model. Oh, dude, you want to see how cool I was? Seriously. I'm going to show you how cool I was. What's this? Yep, those are the lyrics to Sweet Child of Mine. So, yeah. So this is 88-ish. So I was like 10 or 11. Um, oh, wait, no, 89. Because this says June 89. Um, my penmanship was very... Cursive. Uh, Monte Diablo. That was a story I was working on. Most of my stories were about two paragraphs long. <clears throat> Meaning that um, I just stopped writing at that point. Uh, three men out... Three men out college name. Adam the oldest, Jason, and Ron the youngest. Bought a house in a new development. So that's fucking awful. Um, Snake Men and the Missing Gargoyle. I used to write stories for my He-Man figures. And um, basically because I thought they were shit. Like, 
I wasn't getting what I wanted. And I think they had stopped making stuff like that. Joe was working with Snake Face. Yeah, Snake Face was a He-Man. Joe read that there was a new gargoyle at the museum. He turned into King Hiss. Oh my god, Joe was King Hiss the whole time. And the Viper turned into Snake Face. Well, he was already Snake Face. What's happening here? Uh, Snapperhead. In the summer of 86, there was a guy. It's so funny. Every story starts off with, um, oh, you want to see something badass? For some of you science fiction nerdiados. Here's a picture of the Overlord from uh, Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. Um, but it's based off of the Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials um, thing. Look at that. Oh, what are all these lines coming off? What what's the, what is that? Oh, I'm going to show you what his shit does. Because that's what it does in Barlow's. But as you can see, I am not as good of an artist as Mr. Barlow. Oh, you want to see Tornado Man? Yeah, that's Tornado Man. Or a head piled on top of a bunch of smooth stones. Um... What else do we got? Yeah! This is like probably... Oh, I got this folder at TG&Y for 89 cents. Want to see an old price tag? Oh, that's fascinating. I love old price tags. <clears throat> okay, what do we got here? From the home. I guess like this was like stationery you could buy. From the home, dot, dot, dot. And then you were supposed to put, like, me. Um, oh, this is just me drawing. So, oh, you, you guys want to know who the top agent in Orange County or in Cyprus was in the mid-80s? Darla Morrill. Yeah, top agent. Look at that hair. Look at that turtleneck. All right, <clears throat> so I drew snake men. So I have snake face, squeeze, tongue lasher, and for some reason I made King Hiss a doctor. I don't know why I did that. Um, and then Rattler and Cobra Con. That's kind of fun. I used crayons. And here I use something else. Oh. Hey, did you guys want to know what it would be like if me as a child decided I was going to be Mad Max? Yeah, my name would be Mad Matt. And apparently that's not a coonskin cap. That's my hair. And guns just kind of float around me. And my car turns into that thing. But then there are some other guys here. Now, this was a toy I had. Can't remember what it was called, though. Blastar. And he had this, like, cool truck. Okay. But this dude, I don't know if he was from the toy line. Steel Skull. He looks pretty bitchin', if I do say so myself. And then Wrecker. I hardly knew her. Um, and he looks like uh, Lord Humongous, that um, wrestler guy who was actually in one of the Mad Max movies. So that was kind of cool, huh? Um, oh, and here's a list of names just because I make lists all the time. So Gill Dude, Diaper Dude, Rope Dude, Cyclone Dude, Strong Dude, um, Falcon? I don't remember that. But do you remember me telling you um, Diaper Man and Baby Man and Muscle Man? Apparently their names were Dude. So I was wrong. Gill Dude, Diaper Dude, Dude Dude, and all that shit. So let's, let's see... You guys are gonna shit. Oh, I am so stoked right now. 
Okay, let's just kind of burn through this fun bit. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we have Guild Dude. Looks pretty happy. And we got Diaper Dude with his bitchin' porn star stash. Damn you, computer, quit doing this to me. Um, what else do we have here? Rope Dude. Oh, look at his crazy wavy arms. And his body is just a circle of rope. Amazing. Um, and then we have Pogo Dude, who I don't even remember. Bazooka Brain, completely spelt wrong. Gripper. The Thinker. Mm, I would I would send him back. I think I don't know if these all these guys made it to the final. Um, but yeah, here is Whaler, who is a half man, half whale guy who rides a bodyboard in the ocean and throws harpoons at people because whales throwing harpoons makes perfect sense. And the rope comes out of his belly button. So it just like unravels and then he like reels them in, I guess. And then there's Sharky and he um, rides around on an upside down surfboard apparently and shoots torpedoes. But look at that bitchin' hat. Man. Oh, this is just... Okay, so, again. Oh, come on. Come on. So, Cyclone Dude. Strong Dude. Look at that afro. It's very nice. Falcon. He's a bird. With a nose on his face or something. And crazy Dude. He looks even crazier when you see his full body. Those wings don't look like they could fly. Okay, what do we have here? Space Ninjas. I don't know what this is. Did I make this up? Oh, I think I did. Some of these weapons, though, look like things from other things. And I was using Whiteout. I think I just found liquid paper. Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's my friend Joey's... Oh! America's number one top seller, 21st century. Hey, Dave and Linda Chamberlain can help you out with that. Damn it. Okay, so here we go. We have Hall. He's a space ninja. And see, like, I did a profile so you could see that his face is, like, being pulled back off of his face. And then we have this, uh, I guess he's supposed to be Australian, Crocodile Dundee probably came out around this time. His name is Trang, the Boomerang Man. Oh, Boomerang, Trang. Okay, I could see kind of where I was going with that. Um, and this is Champ. Is that a name? He looks a bit weird. And then we have, oh, Shield. Because he has He-Man's uh, Thunder Punch He-Man Shield for some reason. And he looks a little... Oh, we got more. We got more. Okay, I'll try to do this fast. Um, that dude. Storm. Copyright infringement. Um, buff. See? Look at that washboard stomach that looks like scales. Oh, and Jitsu. Yeah, look at that. Oh, man. And then I think I was drawing the bad guys from Running Man. Um, so that's fun. Okay. So that was very interesting. Why? Oh, my God. Why I got excited is because um, I used to draw these guys, and then I would, like, photocopy them. Wait, how come you can't see it? And I would... Um, like glue them to a shoe box and then cut the shoe box thing. So I go, Oh, here's Birdman, he's coming. And then Diaper Dude's like, No, no. Oh wait, no, he says Diaper Man. Well look at how Dapper Diaper Man is. He has one bottle that if he squeezes it, a blade comes out, and one bottle that if he squeezes it, acid milk comes out and burns your face. Um oh and here's Sharky man. Yeah, I used to play with my um, self. <laughs> oh, wait, no, this wasn't a shoebox. 
it was Chanel number five. So I must have done this at my grandma's house. Um, there's Whaler Man with his belly. Oh, and then Baby Man, the arch nemesis of Diaper Man. Um, so yeah, so that's just ridiculous. But what I got all excited about, this is probably my, my first published work. Oh, wait, no, it can't be because it says part two of four. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is Z-Men. Strong Man's Big Mistake. Introducing Flyman. Hey, guess what? I was a child, and I knew how to market a new character, idiots. Fuck, man. Could a writer from Marvel please watch my channel for three seconds? Um, oh, part three of four was going to be called In Search for a Fly Swatter. I guess that's because the fly shows up. Um, but yeah, I thought this was going to be a comic book, but it's just a storybook. Um... Three days after the eruption, Baby Man, Muscle Man, Cyclo Man, and Wire Man survived the lava because Strong Man made the muscle bubble too strong. Wire Man said, Sir, I have found it. The fly? said Baby Man. Yes! The giant fly was in some swart, that's not right, of iron box. They quickly opened the box. The giant fly flew out of the box and said, Free, free, free to destroy! Who freed me? I, said Baby Man, Lord of the Baby Bottles, I am Fly Man! You will work for me, said Baby Man, and if I don't, Muscle Man! Muscle Man threw a thunder punch and hit Fly Man. Okay, okay, said Fly Man. What do you want me to do? Oh my gosh, this is, this is fucking gold, okay? Strong man's big mistake. This is gold. Oh, man. I can't believe that I have part two of four, but I don't see part one of four. I'm sure I made it. And then in case you got confused of who was who, um, this is the, the diaper pins, the good guys. And the baby bottles, the bad guys. And apparently there was some sort of water damage. Doesn't smell mildewy. Um, okay, this is more of my Mad Map fan fiction, I guess. Oh, some originals. What's this? What's this? What's this? It feels very big. What's this? What is this? Seriously, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's just paper. Oh! <sighs> Guess who has two thumbs and made a book called The Maze of Ghosts with tons of monsters on the cover? This guy. <sighs> oh, I even lined the pages to make it easier to read. Yeah, that's fancy. Um, oh my god, this is so funny. Are you ready? Sit back, folks. The year 2022. Far off into the future. Mount Fuji blew its top. Headline as a copper. I think that's supposed to be a chopper. Um, flew over Fuji. It blew it top. The copper got hit by the expoyan and landed inside... Fuji. This is Nick Waldridge signing off. Oh, that was a that was a news report. That makes more sense. Hey Nick, the boss wants to see you. Tell him I'll be right there, okay? What's going on, boss? I guess he got there quick. What's going on, boss? I want you to go to Japan and go in Fuji. Go to Fuji? I don't know. I have near left the USA. There is a first time for everything. Yeah, no. I'll pay for everything. I'll even give you $1,000. In Japanese money. Well, I guess so. Hey, Nick. I'll dive you to the airport. I'm going to guess I was a bit younger. 
because there's a lot of words not spelt right here. Um, what a flit. I need gird. Oh, you need geed? Uh, yeah, where are you going? Inside Fuji. Why? I'm Nick Waldridge, bitch. No, it doesn't say that. My friends call me chicken. But why? Well, I, a new reporter, I have to go in and see what's going on. Well, you got a geed. Let's go. Um, I think that uh, he should have been asking why they call him chicken. Because I, I don't understand that. But it's funny because I like numbered these pages and just stopped writing it right there. I just read you the whole story of the maze of ghosts. So apparently my thought is, I guess, that inside this Mount Fuji that blew its top, there's a maze. And inside the maze are ghosts. But none of these look like ghosts. They look like monsters. So... And apparently, the guide's name was Fu Manchu. So I apparently uh, plagiarized quite a bit. And yeah. Oh no. So that was super fun. God damn it, where is issue one of four? And I, I feel like a comic book collector who's just never going to find the right damn comic. Oh, the elusive number one. Yeah, you'll never find it. So anyway, so that is a bunch of me being cringy. Although, oh, it was number five, Chanel. Paris, New York. Um, but yeah, that was fun. I don't think that was as cringy. I had more fun with that, I think. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Talk to you later.